What's up everybody, John Eric Poli here with my MMA news and today we'll be taking a look at the Netflix uh, series McGregor Forever. Uh, just recently came out about uh, Con McGregor, followed him throughout uh, the course of a few fights and I just want to start by saying great documentary. If you're a fan of the UFC or of mixed martial arts, you're definitely going to like this documentary. Uh, that's at least my opinion. It seems it's been the opinion of several other people as well that have watched it and uh, it has to definitely be uh, you know a good show for Netflix because when I watched which was late last week Thursday into Friday uh, it was number two out of all shows on Netflix so to crack the top 10 in Netflix you got to be a good show so the way I'm gonna start this before I give you what I liked about it and didn't like about it I'm gonna give you guys a little brief synopsis of uh, what each episode kind of entailed there were four different episodes um, in the series so I just want to you know be clear this isn't really a spoiler alert situation like in case you're one of those people like I don't want to watch this because he's going to ruin something on me not really ruining anything there's none of those like you know spoiler type of moments anywhere throughout the uh, the course of the episode so uh, with that being said let's start diving into it so Episode one was called Bad Blood. It was 55 minutes long. I'm sure you could guess with that title with Bad Blood. It was about Habib Nurmagomedov and uh, the rivalry there between him and Connor. It actually started off, though, with Connor. Um, you kind of saying that McGregor forever that ended up being the title. And it was post-surgery from Dustin Poirier before it got into everything. But, yeah, so the show opens up with, uh, you know, Connor recovering from that injury. Then it kind of shows all the success that he had in his career up to being the champ champ in the UFC getting that massive fight with Floyd then it kind of talks a little bit um, you know shows Connor uh, in dad life being a dad for the first time that was about 11 months post uh, Mayweather so then we get into the whole Habib training and it gets all throughout all the bad blood shows the dolly on the bus shows Connor with court uh, getting sentenced to the community service sentence that he got um, and then uh, also, like I said, really got into in-depth training there. And I think we remember from that fight, right? My foot was a balloon. It showed Connor injuring his toes. Uh, he had a broken toe. They actually had to snap it back into place. So uh, then obviously takes you through the raw emotions afterwards of Connor after he lost. And it even shows Connor doing his community service. That, for me, was might have been the best episode of it all. Uh, you know, a lot of emotions of the highs and lows of the sport. Fantastic job by everybody involved there episode two as real as it gets it's around 50 minutes long uh, opens with Connor injuring his hand that silent him for about 12 weeks we see again more fatherhood stuff takes us through his daughter's baptism uh, and then it shows Connor really helping out the youth too in Ireland. I didn't know that side about him there. I was a little surprised when I saw that. I knew he, you know, is very proud of where he comes from, but uh, did a lot for the youth that are um, in mixed martial arts, speaking at different gyms and, and encouraging the young kids. That was a nice thing to see. Uh, and then it goes into the Cowboy Cerrone fight. Big win for Connor, and it really showed him getting back into the love of the game. The Habib fight when he came out of. Uh, if you want to call it a retirement or after a hiatus, uh, you know, that was all for, like it was called, bad blood. He wanted that fight with Habib. He wanted to prove a point. Um, obviously, fight didn't go his direction. And when he fought Cowboy Cerrone, it was to show that he was still passionate about the sport, that he still loved it and wanted to train and was in it for the right reasons. And uh, we, you know, he took us through all of that. We saw the you know emotions after that win, uh, the thrill of the victory with the family. That was a nice scene afterwards back in his locker room. Episode 3 insane uh, in the game 48 minutes long uh, opens with Connor retiring I'm sure we've seen quite a bit of that throughout his career but uh, uh, then after his retirement it, he really you know spoke a lot about his love for his longtime girlfriend D uh, and their kids and, and you know everybody's heard that story how she's helped him uh, in his career at one time she was kind of working for him to pursue the dream that they now have now um and then after that uh you know we get back to uh you know a lot of the fight game stuff here we saw habib retiring at the beat and just justin gaethje connor's reaction to that moment in time i thought was pretty interesting um one thing in that episode that i didn't like though i'm not gonna lie uh he was filming a commercial 
uh, early in the episode, and he was asked about Habib. This was, I believe it was uh, right before it showed Habib's retirement, and Connor was saying that he really won the fight and the boss shouldn't have fought him inside the octagon. That just, you know, allowed Habib to essentially have a chance at getting even with him. He should never accept the fight. I didn't like it because that was not cool what Connor did that day, but anyway, then we get into the Dustin Poirier rematch, taking us through all of that. Uh, we saw a very passionate Connor again, just loving the fight game, which was great to see um then final episode till the day i go out 54 minutes long a lot of criticism it opens up with shockingly for a you know a documentary made about somebody it showed all the criticism that connor got after losing to dustin poirier uh losing to habib before that kind of not as strong as performances um and then we saw you know the build up of, of connor coming back for that fight it showed his ankle injury that he that he injured before the fight even happened, that he got from throwing kicks, because as you remember, first fight with Dustin Poirier, Dustin's kicks were effective. Connor wanted to be a little bit more active with the legs in uh, the second fight. He injured his ankle going into the fight. Then, of course, we see the loss. Uh, it takes you through Connor's rehab a, a little bit and just, you know, his comeback. So that's essentially what you're going to see in all four of the episodes if you didn't see it already. Um, with that being said, though, let's talk about what I liked, what I didn't like from this show. Uh, so one of the things that I liked, the raw emotions post-fight. Nothing like seeing that. I think a lot of uh, fans remember the uh, the old UFC thrill and agony videos and how exciting those were to watch, to see the different sides of the sport, and to see some of those raw emotions afterwards was really something, especially after the Habib loss. The Connor was absolutely gutted afterwards. You could see the emotions. I mean, the emotions were there, obviously, after he beat uh, uh, Cowboy Cerrone, a, a big one that night, everybody cheering, but nothing like those raw scenes from after the Habib loss. Uh, another thing I liked, the drive's still there. If that was ever in question, we know he still has it. He's definitely passionate about the sport. Maybe he's not as active as he once was, but he's still passionate about it. When he signs on the dotted line, he's going to fight. He's all in. He's going hard in training. He's coming in in top shape. The drive is absolutely still still there. Uh, that question was answered. I thought that was huge. A big bonus. I really like that one. Another thing, takes care of his family. I know there's been obviously controversy with Connor in a lot of different ways, but he does everything uh, to make sure his kids have the best life. He takes care of his girlfriend uh, very well. They essentially want for nothing. Um, you know, you got to give him kudos there. Again, I know controversy around Connor and a, a lot of different ways and not going to get into those, but at least he, you know, you have to say he does take care of them. Showed a lot of that in the documentary. Um, so Connor, definitely a, a family man to some degree anyway. Uh, another thing I liked uh, was uh, that the documentary put controversy in it. I mean, let's be honest. They're making a documentary about Conor McGregor. They could have went all through just the highs of his career and, and left it at that and very just briefly touched on the, the negative stuff. But you know, a lot of criticisms uh, being shown from when he threw the dog at the bus window. We saw a lot of that. From his losses, we saw a real lot of that. So the fact that they put that in there, I thought was, was pretty interesting. Kind of gives you a little bit of both sides of things. So... Uh, that's what I liked about it. Dislikes, not too many, because this was a very well done film uh, or a very well done series here. Um, one thing I didn't like, you didn't see what, I mean, you did see things outside of the octagon and outside of training, yes. But they didn't follow Connor around every step of the way. Like I said before, with the controversy stuff, we know Connor's been essentially in and out of controversy for, I don't know, the last how many years, about five is that fair maybe a little longer definitely somewhere in that five year bracket there so obviously they didn't have cameras on him all the time we didn't see some of that stuff uh we know there was more than just the the habib bus incident uh, as far as controversy goes so um they could have you know i thought maybe talked a little bit more about that stuff but again it is a documentary made about connor they did have some controversy in it so can't knock it too bad in that um, regard there. But again, still maybe want to see a little bit more of that. Uh, and then the other thing that I didn't like, um, there was in the one episode, I believe it was the Cowboy Cerrone, uh, or no, I'm sorry, it might have been a post-Cowboy Cerrone episode three it was. They kind of had in there that the UFC didn't want to book Connor for a fight. Uh, I would love to hear the UFC's take on it. That's why Connor had his retirement in that episode because the UFC wouldn't book him and he wanted to get back in there. 
Uh, as far as I know, Connor's contract could be different, but as far as I know, every UFC fighter is the same that Dana White has to offer them. I've heard if it's two or three, but two to three fights a year, he has to offer them. If not, they're able to sue the, you know, the UFC back because that is in their contracts. I would love to hear the UFC's take on that. Something just doesn't seem to add up there. Um, but again, is what it is. Overall, though, uh, guys, I will say this very, 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 very well done. If you're a fan of Conor McGregor, you will love this documentary. Absolutely, without a doubt, you're going to fall in love with it. If you're a fan of the UFC or MMA in general, you're going to like this documentary a lot. And about the star's biggest, the, the sport's biggest star, you know, covering a lot of different stuff there. Very, very well done. Here's the only people that aren't going to like it. If you hate Conor McGregor and you don't want to put any of your biases aside, you will not like this documentary because you have went into it with the notion of, I can't stand this guy and you don't want to give it a chance. That would be the only people that don't like this. Very well done. Kudos to Conor, to Netflix, to all the producers, everybody involved with this film. Very well done. I really enjoyed it and I hope you guys did as well.